Okay, what we're working on today is an introduction to Easy Connect. Um, just a quick tutorial to show you some of the, the basics of the program. This is our new CRM package that we'll be replacing Salesforce. Um, it is actually an application, an app that works on your iPad or iPhone um, that sits on top of Salesforce uh, that will allow you to do prospecting and uh, build proposals. When you initially log into Easy Connect or when you download it, or when you download an update to Easy Connect, the first thing you're going to see is this screen here, which is nice. It's just a quick tutorial and a quick reminder of some of the features of Easy Connect, um, and it allow you to to understand uh, what the tools are uh, as you see them. So you see in the top portion, the top left of the um, program. Let me get to where I can draw here. You see in the top left up here, you see a menu bar and tells you that it's a menu bar. Then you can see that you can add a new appointment by adding an appointment. And you can see um, how to navigate from page to page. And you can also see you can swipe to navigate. We're going to be going over all of this, but this is just some reminders. Create a new post in Buzz. We'll go over that as well. And then you can ask for help. And then you can log out of Easy Connect. So from the screen, you can see that initially. If you want to get rid of this navigation helper, um, you just click this X that's in the top right, and that will get rid of that. But if you want to swipe over to the next screen, you'll be able to see once you swipe the um, applications on the next side. So um, let me close this out here, and let's see if we can get to the, to the swiping section. There we go. So now we're on, now we've swiped over, now we're under accounts. And I'll do a little drawing here real quick. You can see that we're in the accounts tab. Again, we're going to be going over this. Um, if it's white and not grayed out, you'll see that is the unselected tab. The tab that you're actually on is darkened. That is your menu for that. You'll see your menu for that up here, but this is the tab that you've selected. Again, you've got the help screen, you've got the logout, you have a global search bar right in here. You can add a new account. All of this stuff we're going to be going over. And again, you can just swipe across the page if you want to navigate as well. So we'll go ahead and swipe over. You can see that we're in account detail. Again, you can see in here what I wanted to get the point was um, if you need some quick help, there's a tutorial that's available to tell you what each one of these things do. Okay, so we will be looking at this a little bit further. Um, I'm going to ex be explaining each one of these in depth, so I'm not going to spend much more time. On this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that orange X that's up in the top right and we'll go ahead and get out of this tutorial screen. So answer the quick question there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back into our dashboard. This is the first thing that you see in Easy Connect is going to be your dashboard. So I'm going to get my drawing tool up here so I can point stuff out for you to see. In the top left are the appointments for today. And this is just a gauge. It's a really a, a gauge to tell you where you should be at in your number of appointments. Um, obviously, in between, uh, in between three and five appointments every day is what you're looking for. So the gauge is going to tell you, you know, what you have in terms of numbers of appointments each day. Just a quick, again, this is the dashboard. So it's just going to be a quick view of what your day or your month looks like. Right underneath appointments per day is your actual calendar schedule for today. Should I have appointments today? then those appointments would be showing up underneath here. And then I can add appointments as I go by clicking on this on the plus. So if I need to add a quick appointment, I can add that. For example, this could be personal appointments. It could be a call block. Um, it could be a, just a prospecting block. If you wanted to add a block of time to your day, you can click that plus button there. You probably won't be adding appointments tied to accounts or tied to opportunities by using this feature on this page. You'll do that from the accounts page or from the prospects page. But this is something that if you wanted to add some accounts or add an appointment, you could do that from that point there. Okay, so then over here, it shows you your location currently. You can scroll out or zoom in or out on this and see where your appointments actually are for today. They'll show up on the map as well. Moving right above that, your pipeline closed for the month. The number that you see in here is in thousands of dollars. So that's um, my March, I'm expecting to close $49,000. Of course, you know using sales math, you take your closing percentage to figure out what you're actually going to close out of that amount. Now, if I had proposals that I have expected close dates for April, May, June, July, or ongoing, those would also show up on my funnel 
um, underneath this. But the way I have mine right now is I only have proposals out there for March. And then you'll see it right next to it, to the right, is my closed sales for this month. If I had closed any sales, they would show up in this month. So again, at the dashboard, upon a quick view, I would be able to see um, where I stand for the month in terms of sales. And then directly underneath that is Buzz. This is what was known as Chatter in Salesforce. An easy connect, we call it Buzz. The nice thing about this, you can scroll through Buzz um, and you'll be able to see, let me close out my drawing tool so I can actually do it. You can scroll through and see what others have posted. And then by pushing the plus button, you can add your own comments to Buzz as well. So, and then they would be published for the rest of the region to see and other followers that you have within um, Chatter or Buzz, they'd be able to see what you post. And this, of course, is important for posting at the end of the day, your number of sales, number of dollars you proposed, the appointments that you had. It's also important for you to ask questions of other salespeople in, um, in the region or in the country. You know, I have this particular challenge. Can you help me with this? Or has anybody proposed um, to this type of business? Or has anybody faced this type of infestation? Whatever it may be, you, you can use Buzz to ask those questions and get get some feedback from a much wider range of folks than you could in the other way. So this is your dashboard. It's your quick view. It's the first thing that's going to come up when you're working in Easy Connect. You can navigate away from your dashboard in two different ways. One way is by using this menu button up here. Should I pull it down, it's going to show me then prospects and accounts sync reports and guided page right now the sync reports functionality is not working with easy connect there's nothing we we use it for at this point and guided page you wouldn't really necessarily use that unless you want to go back to that quick tutorial but from the startup screen so you can you're either going to go to your prospects page or you're going to go to your accounts page depending on what you're going to be working we will be working on the prospects page first so i can either tap on that and go right to the prospects page or I can get to the prospects page another way, which I'll show you. I'll just bring us back here to the main screen. The other way to get to the prospect page is you can see down at the bottom, there are three little buttons, radio buttons. And those, should, those basically tell you where you're at overall in the application. We're on page one. And if I swipe over on the page, the whole page, and I move over, I've now moved to page two. I'm under my prospects page. So I just swiped the whole screen over and now I'm in prospects. And you'll see what's different than Salesforce. Easy Connect lines up all of our prospects as um, tabs. So each prospect is its own tab. You can move prospects in a few different ways. Now, the way that I have brought these prospects over is actually from Salesforce. Since this is an application that sits on top of Salesforce, if you're using Salesforce today, you can build your prospect list in Salesforce. And Easy Connect is going to move over your 100 most recent prospects to allow you to work with them directly out of Easy Connect. The other way that you can actually use this is by finding new prospects. So you'll notice that in the top, this is this my prospect is is darkened out right now. That means that's what I'm looking at right now in terms of prospects. If I want to find new prospects, I will click on Find New Prospects. Now. Before I do that, you can see that there are different ways that I can search in here too. I can search my existing prospects from newest to oldest in terms of the ones that I have brought in to the system. I can search on them um, by industry or I can search my prospects. And this is where you would type in your prospects. So if you have more than 100 prospects in Salesforce that you are working, or if you have more than 100 overall prospects that you're working, they may all not show up on this screen, but they're still there. They're still in Salesforce. They're still in Easy Connect. You just have to search for them, and that's going to bring them up to your more recent prospects and add them to this page and allow you to work those prospects. My suggestion is to keep your prospect list as focused and narrow as you can. Number one, it gives you the persistence, the, you know, the ability to be persistent on those prospects and the ability to be consistently follow up with those prospects and have a plan and have a campaign. But number two, if you keep it narrowed down, all of your prospects are going to be an easy connect and easy to work with at that point in time. So you can search for them that way. Uh, the other thing you can do right from this tab is you can add a new prospect. Anytime you see this plus button, that means you can add something. You can add an appointment from the appointments page. You can add a new prospect from the prospects page. 
You can even add an account at some point in time. You can add later on service locations. For now, we're focused on adding new prospects. So that's what that is right there. So I'm going to go into find new prospects. And this is where we're going to build potentially a prospect list. Now there are some limitations right now in Easy Connect in building a prospect list. This is why I still recommend, while we have the ability to, that you use Salesforce to build your prospect list and then import it into Easy Connect. So the first feature that you have here is you have the ability to enter a zip code. Okay, so you'll enter your zip code, which I'll do in a second, and then you enter your vertical market that you want to search for. And you can search for specific industries as well. So you have the you have different abilities to search in here. Okay, so let me erase this and then I dump my pen tool so I can actually do this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm enter my zip code location. So I'll just enter the one um, where I sit right now. Okay, and then I'm gonna look at my vertical market. So if, if you have that that magnifying glass, it does give you the ability to to drop down and look into specific vertical markets. So what I want to look for here, let's just take food related. So I'm going to choose the food related vertical market. Okay. So what pops up are a listing of really restaurants in the, in the particular area where I sit. So I can choose, you know, quickly, if I want to build my list, I can choose which one of these I want to, to go after. So, um, you know, let's say I wanted, I, extreme cuisine catering probably um, you know they probably have a kitchen that we're going to want to work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move them into my prospects list by clicking on this and they will become a prospect so this is basically a move them to the prospect so when I clicked on that it's now in my prospects tab so it's going to be one of my prospect I can just basically go down the list if I wish and hit that for others. So if I do the same thing for Cups Coffee House, I've moved that in. Um, and now it's on my prospects tab. If I want MVP Pizza, I move that over. It's on my prospects tab. Now these other flags or these other buttons, um, you know, we're not going to worry about them right now um, to go in deep, but I can tell you just quickly what they are and then you'll see it again here in a second. But this is the rating. This is how um, I sell. This is I sell is running in the background and giving us information. This is how I sell rates this customer as a prospect. Basically, it's based on number of employees and revenue. So they've rated this as a C level prospect. Okay, you can change that. Um, and, you know, if you find out they've got more or less business or whatever, but you can you can change that. This is how you log a call. You probably would not log a call from this screen. We'd move them over in the prospect tab if they're worthy of that. You can convert directly to an account and an opportunity by using this button. Again, we wouldn't do that from this screen. That's why I'm not spending much time from this screen on this. This is the one you would move, move most often, use most often, and that's to get them into the prospects tab. Okay. So again, we just want to move, we just want to move them over. Johnny Joe's Inc. You know, as an example, we'll move that in to the prospects tab. So, and that one I failed to, there we go. So we move that over into the prospects tab. Okay, so now I am going to go back into my prospects and I'll use my drawing tool here so you can see again. I'm just going to simply in the top left here, you see my prospects. It's grayed out. So I'm going to go back into my prospects now and you'll see those prospects that we just added at the top here. Joe, Johnny Joe's Inc., MVP Pizza, Cups Coffee House, Extreme Cuisine Catering. Those are the four prospects that we just added to our prospect, which if we have them in our prospect page here, it basically means that we want to create a campaign around that. We're going to follow our prospecting campaign procedures that we have set up in place for emailing, calling, providing proof providers, and providing backup proof, proof later on of our ability and our value. Um, all of that we can do, um, we can manage that from here. So again, once we get into this page and we're working with this pros for these prospects, it's pretty easy. For example, if you come in today and you say, okay, I've got my prospects. I'm going to call the first 15 tabs in my prospects. I'm going to call my, my top 15 prospects here that I'm working on. Um, I'm just going to do a quick call block on them. What is pretty easy to do because what you've got is you've got the phone number right here. Right. And many times you have a contact name. However, using ICEL, I would not trust the contact name. Okay. 
because we know that it doesn't get updated soon. And we have the procedures and we have the steps in place when we call how to get that information. You know, can I get the name of the person who makes the pest control decisions for your facility? Does that person have an email address? Okay, and depending on what your objective is for that call, if your objective is just to get that information, you thank them and you hang up. If your objective on that call is to try to get an inspection appointment, then you ask, you know, are they available for me to speak to right now? Okay, and then you go into from there. So let's say right now, um, our objective is to try to call as many of these as we can and get our appointments. We're simply gonna start here at Johnny Joe's Inc. We're gonna call the number that's on here. Okay, and then I'm gonna hit this button to log the call, regardless of what the status of that call is. So as I hit that, it's gonna come up and I'm gonna get the call date. I made the call today and under this description, you know, when I called Johnny Joe's, I was only able to leave a voicemail. So I left a voicemail. Actually, I didn't leafy voicemail, I left a voicemail, okay? And then you want, you can put in the detail that you want. If you left a voicemail and you say that you wanted to, you left them some information about our BioSys program, or you said this and this, and give a little bit of detail because later on, you know, if they haven't responded to you in six weeks or five weeks, you're going to call them back as we set our cadence for these return calls for those don't, that don't respond. We're going to provide them with a different value the next time we call. So whatever value you left during that, that short voicemail, you want to definitely put that in there but then we're gonna log that call, okay? So it's as easy as that. Then we simply move over to MVP Pizza, we hit the yellow flag, we log the call, we put what we wanna put in, and then we go to the next one, Cups Coffee House, we log the call. And as we scroll down, we can just do this, you know, if our objective is to, is to sit down and make 75 phone calls, you know, in a morning, this is a, a quick way to do that, okay? Now, we can go into each one and, and go a little bit more in depth. Let's say, for example, Johnny Joe's decided, you know, we got on and we got some, some pretty hot information on them. Or another scenario is they didn't respond to us. And now we're back, you know, next week. And Johnny Joe's didn't respond to us this week. So now we're on to our next level of, of um and the next level of prospecting with Johnny Joe's, we opened Johnny Joe's. And what I did was I just clicked on the name, Johnny Joe's. And so we opened it up. Now we're into prospect detail. And as we look at prospect detail, you see that there's a lot more information and there's some other tabs. And we'll go over that information right here. So the first thing that we're gonna see is I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of the page. The home screen, as you see in the top left, will always take you back one screen. So that's gonna take us back to the prospect tab page, overall prospects, okay? Next, we're gonna see more detailed about Johnny Joe's. Um, under this, you know, address, phone number, we can edit this. If it's got a different phone number, or if there's more information, we can use the edit button to edit the prospect information. And then we see where Johnny Joe's is located on the map, and we can see surrounding prospects as well, potential prospects um, provided by ISO, nearest companies. Then if we go down to the bottom left-hand side, we see the prospect status. Right now the prospect is open, right? And if I close out my drawing tool, I can click on the magnifying glass and we can see that we, have, we can choose from open, initial contact, mutual interest, do not call, or we can unqualify the prospect all from this particular screen. Right now they're still open. We haven't established contact with them necessarily. And then you can see also, as we look down a little bit further, there is the call section. So if I hit this down carrot here, you are gonna be able to see that I have logged a call on March 19th and I hit the carrot that's next to it and you can see the message that I left, um, left voicemail. So if there are additional calls on here um, and if I've sent emails, um, you can, you can, uh, you'll be able to see what your history of emails and what your history of calls is. Now, if I go underneath emails, We'll look down here at emails, and you see that there is a plus button. I lost it here. Here we go. See that there's a plus button to add emails. Okay, so if I hit that plus button, I can see, you know, I can put the contact information in, um, the type of message that I had in the email address and whatnot, and say that I've completed it in the prior to normal. I can, I can follow up here that I have put in an email, which I'm not gonna log the email in now, um, but I can certainly log this email. So, so I know that the next time I've, that I go back into this, 
that I have sent an email and I have called them. So you can track your email. So you'd send your email out of Outlook and then basically go in and log the fact that you sent an email. So when you're out on the road and, and, you, and Johnny Joe's called in, you can quickly pull up their tab and see where you're at in terms of how many times you've reached them or contacted them. So I'm gonna bring up my drawing tool again so I can show you some other features on this page. We'll go into this one here shortly, which is convert to an account and an opportunity. We can set up a new reminder or we can set up a new appointment. More often than not, we're gonna be using convert to an account and an opportunity, or we're gonna be using a new appointment. We won't be using new <clears throat> reminders very often, um, because if it's gonna be something where we're facing the customer, we're gonna be in front of the customer, or if we want to set up a, a schedule to call them or a specific appointment to call them, we wanna use appointments, because it, uh, it, it, it shows up on a calendar versus a to-do list, okay? So now, I've erased this and what I've drawn on, and now we're looking at Johnny Joe's again. It's important to note here, um, I'm gonna go back one screen and show you um, if my screen will catch up with me here. Oops, it will in just a second. So I hit the home screen in the top left, and it took me back to my prospects page. And um, Johnny Joe's has disappeared. I'm scrolling all the way down to all my prospects. Johnny Joe's has disappeared off of my prospect page. So I'm going to do a quick search and see if I can find Johnny Joe's. Because I did not convert it, so it should still be there. It is. So I did a search and found Johnny Joe's that came back up on me here. So so we've got Johnny Joe's. It's back on the on the screen again. It's when I when I was in working with it, it just took us off the top the prospects page for a second. It should it should still be there because I haven't converted it. And that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to show you. But I want to show you this feature here. I want to point out this feature. If you quickly want to convert this, if you're on a phone block and you don't need to go into the tab and see the prospect detail, and you want to convert this to an, an account and an opportunity, if you're ready to go out and do an inspection at this point. So if you're going to go out and do an inspection, you want to schedule that inspection, you click on this quickly to take it to the convert to an account and an opportunity. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. There's a couple ways, different ways we can do that. That is one way to do that. And the other one that you saw was when we go into the account detail tab, which I'll do again here. I'll tap on it. We go into the account detail tab. Down at the bottom left, convert to an account and an opportunity. I'm going to click on that now. And you're going to find some features here of this as this comes up. The first thing that you're going to see is that this new appointment tab is highlighted. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create that new appointment because if we're converting them to an account and opportunity, that means we've scheduled an appointment with them or we've scheduled an inspection with them. So you have the ability to, to set up a new reminder, which there's no need to if we're setting up an appointment, or if you just want to convert them to an account only, you can do that here. But again, if we've scheduled an inspection with them, we're going to propose, so it should be an opportunity at this point, right? If we're going to propose, it's going to be an opportunity. So let's leave it as an account and an opportunity. Okay, so then you have the features that we're going to fill in. So you'll track along with me here as we fill this in. The first thing we're going to see is the target pest. I'm going to click the magnifying glass out on this. And for the sake of this, of this training session, let's just choose um, general pest. So we'll pick general pest. I'm the account owner. The type of account is it's an initial appointment. You see here we have initial appointment, follow-up, a QA appointment, a client meeting, call block, sales training meeting, personal time vacation, and other. This one, you know, when we're meeting with a customer before we have proposed them, it is either going to be an initial appointment or a client meeting. If we are meeting with them after we proposed, it's either going to be follow-up or it's going to be a client meeting. And if we're meeting them after they're a customer, it will be a QA or a client meeting. We won't ever use other um, because it just simply does not give you enough information down the road to use for anything. Now, call block, sales training, and personal time and vacation are all items that you can use to build your calendar like we showed on the very first page. This is my schedule. If you want to add something to your schedule that is not related to an account or an opportunity, you add it there. Those three items are your own personal calendar items. You wouldn't use them under account and opportunity. So here, this particular meeting is going to be an initial appointment. 
right? And we are probably not going to meet with them today. So let's set this up for tomorrow. And um, we'll meet with them at 2 p.m. Should go till 3. You have the ability to create a, a recurring series. Again, this is great for call blocks. Um, it's great if you, have, if you have regular sales meetings when you're setting up your personal stuff. Odds are with a customer you're not going to set up or with a prospect you're not going to set up a recurring event. So we're going to leave that blank. Now, I'm going to click Save on the bottom right here in orange. You see the Save. I'm going to click on Save. And yeah, I want it to access my calendar. If this is the first time you're using it, you'll see that the first time you use Easy Connect is going to access my calendar and it's going to save that. And you can see that I've cr successfully created an account and an opportunity. The next thing that you see is that that particular Johnny's is not on my prospect page. I'm still on my prospect page and it's not here. So it must have gone somewhere, which means it's probably now set up as an account. Let's hope. So I'm going to swipe the whole page to the right and that's how we're going to move over to our accounts page. So now we're on accounts. So the way accounts is set up is really similar. You can view your accounts any number of ways. You can look at today's schedule, which is what it's defaulted to. I don't have anything on my schedule for today. Recently created accounts is the next one. And then pipeline accounts. Pipeline accounts are accounts that you have proposed. You can search um, by last modified you can we'll look at this in just a second or you can do a global account search which looks at every account in easy connect so if there are accounts that you have been working or that you have proposed that don't come over the first time you've used easy connect which they won't you're going to want to search using that global search for other accounts that you've created so if you have accounts that you're working on that'll search salesforce and bring them over into easy connect so if i click on that recently created it's going to, let's see, I'm got rid of that. So now I'm going to click on recently created. We, and then I'm going to refresh the screen. Hopefully upon a refresh, I'll find Johnny's, but if this has not been working all that well, so I'm going to do a search for Johnny's. Let's see if it finds it here. This is an issue that we have been having Johnny Joe's. So there it is. It's the second one that shows up. So I'm going to be able to show it up. Normally what these are, what's going to happen with these is they will show up as a tab. But here lately there's been a little bit of a glitch. It's something I thought that they had addressed with this most recent update last night. Um, but it's not fixed yet. So I'm going to chase them down. Anyway, it will show up as a tab on your accounts. Um, right now what you have to do is basically bounce out of Easy Connect and come back in. Um, and then it does show up. Um, but that should be addressed before the end of this week. So right now we're still dealing, still dealing with that. So, but now we're here. This is what it's going to look like once it works. We're going to be able to see we're in the account detail for Johnny Joe's, similar to prospect detail, but a little bit different in terms of some of the features that you're going to see. So we'll be able to see what our next appointment is. Um, it shows here no upcoming appointments, um, even though we know we have one set up for tomorrow. So um, that's something that's not that is not. Uh, working as we bring it back over this way so that's that's a feature I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chase down then we have our future appointments okay then we have past appointments so maybe future appointment may, yeah the future it does show up as future appointment so I let me I pop down into future appointment and my meeting is showing up as a future appointment so it is set up there as future appointment so it's just not coming up as next appointment which is another uh, another piece that needs to get resolved in here so Still working through the newness of Easy Connect, and I know they have a lot of stuff that they want to add to it as we go, and there's going to be upgrades and changes every every week. So that's one that we have here. So the next thing you're going to look at is under this section right here, you'll see any opportunities that you have proposed or are going to propose. This is our initial opportunity, and we can see that we haven't proposed anything yet. And I'm actually going to click on the opportunity number. I'm going to tap on the opportunity number you'll see a couple different things here number one if I had proposed it this would be red instead of grayed out and there would be an inspection list number of the inspections that I've done would be here and the dollar amounts that I proposed would be there as well okay so then up here this is where we could add contacts we can add service location we can add notes we can do photos and show floor graphics 
um, for, for this particular account as well. Again, we're under the account detail here. It's important to see, not, not the opportunity detail, but the account detail. Here is our opportunity detail, okay? So separate, but important. So a couple things that we can do in here, we can, if we look at the very bottom, we can create a oppor new opportunity. We don't need to do that here because we haven't even finished with this first opportunity. We can do a new inspection, which is how we'll build our proposal. Pro grade out is new proposal because we haven't done an inspection yet. And then we can do new reminders and new appointments. So if we have to meet with a, another decision maker or something along those lines, we can create those appointments down there. So really what we want to focus on is doing an inspection under this account down here so we can actually build a proposal. So I'm going to get out of my drawing tool here so I can hit new inspection. And when we tap new inspection, you'll be able to see that we can, we'll have six sections to the proposal. Okay. The graph recommend build price propose and approve. Now we won't use the graph necessarily um, for anything other than termite and right now it's not set up necessarily for termite so we'll still do a manual graph for termite. So really what we want to do is we want to go to next and start building the proposal. So I'm going to be using this orange next down at the bottom uh, right to go from screen to screen. I clicked and I tapped on next and that should take me to number two, which is the recommend, st recommend tab. However, it's not functioning for me here. There we go. Now, I'm in that, I went one too many, so I'm gonna go back to number two. There we go. So you see our typical what we heard, what we saw, what we recommend, and a scope of service, uh, special instructions, and we'll get down to the rest of it. So in the what we heard section, the what we heard section, as you know, you want to, during your interview process and during the inspection, you're going to be asking a number of questions of them. You know, what service do you have now? What's your frequency? You know, are there, is there anything that you're concerned about? If you're, if you're interviewing a restaurant, how many deliveries do you get a week? You know, how many, uh, you know, what's your, what's your customer, uh, you know, what you, how often do your customers come in? Are they regular customers? What percentage of your customers are repeat customers? You know, depending on the vertical market you're working in, you're going to have a set of questions that you're going to ask in the interview process that helps you build your proposal. Now, you're going to answer all of those questions in this What I Heard section. So your What I Heard section is going to be detailed. This is where I'd recommend getting a keyboard cover for your iPad because you're going to want to type this out. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just going to fill this in with test so you can see what, I've, what I'm doing, okay? And what we saw is what you're going to list from your inspection in detail, any conducive conditions that you saw, any pest infestations that you saw, anything like that, you're going to actually put that into what I saw. What I recommend is going to be equally as detailed, okay? So you want to make this, you want to build your value. This section of the proposal is where you build your value. And of course, you know the scope of service has to be detailed as well. And then if you have any special instructions, you'll put that in as well here. So, you know, I'm just using test, but this is a really important piece of the proposal building process where you can create some value in that proposal. All right. So now covered pests, this is something that's great and easy connect versus Salesforce where Salesforce defaults to everything. This one defaults to nothing. So if you have a customer, for example, that says, you know, I want to cover, you know, your standard pests, but I don't want rodent control right now. You can actually deselect mice and rats. And that way, if for liability reasons down the road, if they come, if they get a rodent infestation and they come back to you and say, well, you told me that you were going to cover rodents. And if you pull up the agreement, you can see, well, actually, you know, this proposal and our scope of service that we have right now doesn't include rodents. It's certainly something that I can add to you to your contract. So, you know, this is a great feature for you um, to, to protect yourself down the road. And then the same thing too on core service areas, you know, depending on the type of building that you're in, you can select all or select some of these core, core service areas. So for the most part, you're usually gonna be doing most of the building or all of the building, but there is, if there's some areas they don't want covered, you'll be able to deselect those. So I'm gonna click next and move on to the next one. We're actually gonna build the proposal. So we have our opportunity name. It's Johnny Joe's Inc. That's the name of our opportunity. It happens to be the name of our account. We have the service location that we're going to be servicing. If there are multiple service locations, um, you'll be able to, to add those in. You saw from the opportunity screen that we could add service locations. Um, then we choose our service line. So our service line is just going to be general pest control. So we're going to choose pest control. 
and we're going to choose a frequency. We like to do our restaurants weekly, so we're going to do a weekly agreement on this, which means that our sales template is going to be GPC weekly. Our main target pest then is going to be GPC. So we're going to be looking at general pest. So we put in general pest and we click next. Now is where we're going to actually price our proposal. Okay, so we're going to use for an example here, um, we're going to say that this is a 2,000 square foot facility. The next line is minutes to service. Let's say it's going to take a half hour. And let's say that this place is pretty, pretty roachy. And we're going to have to, to spend some time taking care of, of this problem. So we know that we want to use a 10 time modifier on our initial. And this is something that just comes with knowledge. And you know, most of you who are in this know that um, you know, what, what it's going to cost to do a roach clean out. So let's, let's say this is going to be a pretty good roach clean out. So our price per service, depending on your location, let's say that a half hour here is um, $60. We're $120 an hour in this particular market, which means that at a 10 time modifier, our initial is going to be $600. So it's 10 times our price per service. Shows our calculated base price to be 46. That's just a reference guide for you. It's generalized. In this particular market, we don't have sales tax on pest control, so we're going to put that in there. If you're going to price override, if you're going to go under the calculated base price, you'd use the price override. My hope is that all of you, none of you do that. So anyway, we've built our price here for our service, and it says we weren't able to load the inspection information. So now we've run into an issue. So let me go back to a previous screen and make sure that I have everything filled out that I need. GPC weekly. You know what I may, what we may have run into here is let me get back into price. It may not like that custom modifier yet. So let me go back up to modifier. Let's use a four time modifier and see if that allows us to get through. And if that's the case, we can I can report back and say, yeah, so it's not liking the custom modifier. That is a feature that we're going to have to fix in the system. Okay, so now if I'm going to propose this, I'm going I have to choose which inspection. So you could have multiple inspections and, and combine inspections into one proposal. So say, for example, you're going to be doing um, rodent control. You would build the labor for the rodent control into your first inspection. The first inspection would be all of the labor that's involved. Your second inspection then would then be the merchandise where you would pick the, the bait stations and the tin cats and that sort of thing. So you would have the first proposal be the labor piece where you say, you know, it's going to be $60 per month plus $3 per bait station. So you'd add the number of bait stations, add that in, you know, and have that in your scope of service. And then the second inspection would just be for merchandise sales. And that's where you would be able to build in your merchandise sales. Cause you probably noticed as I was building this proposal, it didn't have a place for the merchandise. So you would do that as a second inspection. And then you would just simply highlight both inspections instead of just the one and then build your proposal. So we'll click next. And then you see our from our proposal page as it comes up. I'm going to scroll down through this middle section right here and highlight this. See this first page here, there's a grade checkbox that has to be included. So it's so it'll be a, but you can choose what pages of the proposal you want. If you want this cover page, you can add the cover page. If you want the about us page, you can add that. Something in particular about pest control, you can add this. Our experience and training, you can add that, or you can take it out. So if this is a quick proposal, you're in a restaurant, you just did your inspection, they just they know what they want. You don't need to add it, add all this value to it. You just want to get a quick sign. You just simply leave it in there because what else is included in here is the other section, which talks about the restaurants, um, the scope of work, and the pricing summary. Okay, so those are automatically included. That's going to be in your proposal. You can see over to the to the right. So now if they have a PO number, you would put in the PO number and you can win it off of the PO number. Or if you want them to sign, you click on the customer signature box and it'd come up and they would sign it um, with their finger or with a stylus. Okay, I'm going to X out of that because if I win this, it will actually convert to go in as a sale. Or you can do a Terminex signature underneath that as an authorized signature as well. And then you would click next and that would actually integrate and go to stage five for your branch manager's approval and you would actually win the sale. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the uh, my give me just a second here. I was going to click on my pen but I can't see my pen. 
So I'm going to click on Save Document. See the bottom center? I'm going to click on Save Document. Just a second. I'm going to close out Cortana so I can see. All right. So I can save the doc document. I'll save it as a test document here. And it saved it. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the home screen. I'm going to use the home screen in the top left. If I click on the home screen, it's going to take me back to the account page. So now what you're going to see under the opportunity, I'm going to click on the opportunity that's in the center there, and you'll see that the proposal is now red. You can see that I've got an inspection tied to this. You can see that my total amount for my proposal is $3,300. Okay, so now if I want to do a new inspection, I can do a new inspection. You see down at the bottom. And I'm going to try to get this to where I can't see this. Well, I can't do that right now. So I'm going to keep on trucking here. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Now I got my pen back. So our red proposal, our pricing, and we're done. Now, if I want to open this proposal back up, all I have to do is tap on that red proposal and our proposal comes back up again. If I was going to add a new inspection, I would do that here. If I want to do a separate proposal and say give them a bird proposal outside of this one, I would create another opportunity to be called Johnny Joe's bird proposal. I could do a new proposal off of the initial inspection do a new reminder and a new appointment just like we saw okay so that really should be our features overall of easy connect going from your dashboard to your prospects to your accounts to your proposals and that's how you would that's your basic introduction introduction how to build a proposal how to go from prospect to proposal with easy connect on a basic fundamental gpc proposal now, there are other features that we want to get into in terms of doing a bird proposal, in terms of doing a termite proposal, in terms of doing a really in-depth type of proposal or a multi-location proposal. We can absolutely get into more of those and we'll do that in later trainings, but I wanted to make sure you had the fundamentals of Easy Connect. Again, I appreciate your time. Good luck with Easy Connect and don't hesitate to email if you have any questions.